right, welcome to today's course. Uh, we are going to discuss leasehold estates. And if you remember, this was the second version we mentioned back ago when we talked about the freehold estate. At that time, we said there was a second version of that with a defined period of time or limited period of time is the way that I explained it because limited sounds like lease. So you have a leasehold estate. So let's get started with today's course. All right. So a lease is a contractual obligation between the owner of the property that currently holds the title and that person would be called the lessor. And the tenant who would be called the lessee. Sometimes the lessor, you also hear it called the landlord. All right. We are going to transfer some portion of those five rights. And if you think back to the bundle of rights, remember there were five of them that came with the ownership. You had exclusion, control, the right of disposition. You had that thing called quiet enjoyment where you have the right to be left alone by third party people trying to take your and you had possession. And we talked about the freehold estate transfers those five rights in some degree for an undefined period of time. Or in, and that is where the freehold estate. At that time, we mentioned the second type, which was a leasehold estate. And a leasehold estate is a transfer of these rights in some fashion for a limited period of time. So let's go through this. Do we transfer the right of exclusion? The answer is we do not. It is still my property. I still have the right to come on it. Now, there is this whole thing called the Uniform Landlord and Tenant Act, which defines some of that access but usually the landlord will give notice to the tenant and say, hey, in the, I'm giving you a 24 hour notice. Or if there's an emergency like free flowing water or fire, he doesn't have to give notice, but he cannot be excluded by the tenant. So we do not transfer the right of exclusion. Do we transfer the right of disposition? <laughs> no, the tenant or the lessee cannot sell the property, all right? He can't give it away because he didn't receive the right of the disposition. Does he receive the right of quiet enjoyment? Yes, he most certainly does, all right? He also has the right to be left alone with no third party intervention unjustly. Does he, do we transfer the right of possession? Well, sure we do because that's typically what most tenants think of when they ran as a place to live. So we do transfer the right of possession to that prop uh, lessee. And if you remember, that's why it's in a state because an estate requires possession. Otherwise it's an interest like a lien. Do we transfer the right of control? Well, that's a good question. Do we transfer this right? The answer is most certainly maybe, all right? We do transfer the right of control to some extent. And wouldn't it be really cool if we could give that lessee some kind of instruction booklet that explains the right that we are, explains the, the amount of control to the ten, uh, tenant. Now, let me try that again. Wouldn't it be cool if the lessor could give an instruction booklet to the lessee to explain the amount of control that they are transferring from the lessor to the lessee? 
that should have given you a hint that yes, that would be cool if we could do that. Well, that instruction booklet has a very specific name. That's in essence what the lease is. It is the instruction booklet or the definition or the guide that tells the tenant what rights were transferred. You have the right to possess the property. You have the right to use it as a residential residence. It also explains the rights that are not given. No pets. No, you can't use this as a place of business. Uh, don't park on the yard, use the driveway. So that's in essence what the lease is, is nothing but that contract that explains the amount of rights or the degree of the rights that are given from the lessor or the landlord to the lessee. Now, because it is a limited time frame, at some point, those rights will actually come back to the original lessor or the original landlord or the original owner. Therefore, the owner retains the reversionary right of possessing the property. What does revert mean? Go back to. So it does, the landlord does retain the reversionary rights of all of these properties. When the time frame is over, all of these will be transferred back to the original lessor. Now we've mentioned the term statute of frauds before, and the statute of frauds states that a, some contracts are so important to be defendable in a court of law, they must be in writing. And I told you that real estate works under the statute of frauds, meaning that real estate has to be in writing. There is one exception, and most states, if not all, actually will accept a lease that is less than one year can be an oral lease. It is still defendable in court. It is just harder to defend. I would never suggest this if you are going into the property management arena or you are going into the landlord and want to be the actual owner of the property. I would suggest that you don't do this because while it technically can be defendable in a court of law, you always boil down to the he said, she said, and that's the biggest problem with any oral contract. Or it could actually even become unenforceable if you think back to the contracts chapter where the judge will not force one party to act. So just make sure that you understand that there uh, technically is a lease less than one year can be oral in the real estate world. So in this leasehold estate, um, there are many different time frames by which is recognized. And we talked about the fact that leasehold means a defined period of time or a limited period of time. That's how I remember leasehold is limited. All right. So there are four that are typically recognized. And the first one is called an estate for years. An estate for years. Now, the estate for years has a defined period of time. It has a specific beginning date and an end date when the contract is actually created. So the lease starts on January the 1st and ends on December the 31st. That is a, an estate for years because we define the beginning and the end at the onset of the contract. And because that end date has been determined 
there does not have to be any notice by either party because we know when, when it ends and we knew that the day we entered into the contract. It cannot automatically renew. All right. There could be an option that you guys have agreed to to allow it to renew, but it does not automatically renew. So there does not have to be given any notice, and on that date, the lease would terminate. That is called the estate for years. Now, slightly similar is this same thing called an estate from period to period. So what happens is it has a defined beginning, but does not have a defined end. It has a time frame by which it is valid. And then at the end of that time frame, it will automatically renew itself. So let's go back over here and look at this. I hate it when it does that. So, in an estate from period to period, it has a defined beginning. So here's the beginning. But the end is not defined. There is a time frame by which it's valid. So let's say for the best example for you guys that you might understand is 30 days or a month. I should give you an insight to where we're going with this. So then what happens at the end of that time frame, it renews automatically. Then it renews automatically. And then it renews automatically. And then it renews automatically. And it virtually will go on forever. So because there is no defined end, how do you get it to end? Well, either party the landlord or the tenant, the lessor or the lessee, must give written notice to the other party that says at the end of this period or the end of the next period, this lease will end. All right? And the question on the exam is, how much notice must be given? Well, most of you all say 30 days. Not technically. Because there are things like week-to-week -week leases. So the actual answer to this is how much notice must be given? You must give one period's notice. Notice it's in a state from period to period. One example of that is the most common one that you guys are thinking of is the estate from month to month. That's a month to month lease. And in that example, you must give one month lease because the period time is one month. If you had a week to week lease, which I have had tenants on that before, you must give how much notice? One week because that's the period in this type of lease so you must give one period to the other side the tenant can tell the landlord hey i'm leaving at the end of next month and the landlord could tell the tenant i am going to end your lease at the end of the next month that's how it gets terminated A written notice by either party can terminate this <clears throat> now, if a tenant stays beyond the time frame that they are legally supposed to be there, they can create what is called a holdover tenant. A holdover tenant is a tenant who was there at one time legally and is now not legal by being there. Do not confuse this with a squatter who has moved into your property. That is different because at no point were they ever there legally. So a lot of people go, oh, like a squatter. 
No, <clears throat> a squatter never was there legally. A holdover tenant is somebody that said, hey, I will leave at the end of October and they have given proper notice and then November the 1st rolls around and they haven't left. That is a holdover tenant because they are there beyond the legal time frame that everybody agreed on. He gave you notice, you accepted the notice for him to move out at the end of October, and then November the 1st comes around and he's still there. Now here's a question, and remember, I am not a practicing attorney, but I did sleep in a Holiday Inn Express. It's getting to be an old joke, people don't know. If that holdover tenant is created and you go to the land tenant and go, dude, you were supposed to be out. And the tenant says, well, you're right. Here's some money. And the landlord accepts that money. He is in essence extending the lease. So typically that's why you see landlords that should say, I don't want your rent. I want you to be out. And if you fail to do that, I am going to have to use the court system and legally evict you because you are now not here legally. So that is an estate from period to period. Now understand that a holdover tenant could be in essence created here too. The holdover tenant is not specific only to the period to period. Anytime a tenant is there beyond the end of the lease that everybody agreed to, that would create a holdover tenancy.